know the drive here was like so aesthetically pleasing because of all the colorful trees yeah it kind of like came out of nowhere i didn't realize i know the colors were changing and then one day it's just everything was red <laughs> and orange <laughs> I, and I was like oh okay it's fall yeah you think that someone who walks every day would uh notice something like that i actually haven't been on a single walk last week so i, I <gasps> noticed it when i was driving i know and i felt it how many steps how many steps have you been getting weekly actually i've mm-hmm. been hitting my ten thousand steps only when i go to the office though that doesn't count you literally go to the office once a week <laughs> <laughs> twice <laughs> twice a week thank you very much <laughs> no that doesn't count man and i only really hit it because <laughs> we had a fire drill and i had to take what 15 flights of stairs down they made you guys take 15, 15 yeah flights? well i was on the f- the 15th floor but yeah. there's there's two flights like there's two sets of stairs, so it's really thirty flights of stairs. Wait, what? Is that like legally yeah. allowed? Yeah, because it's a fire drill. But how about people who are on like the thirtieth floor? They got to take the stairs <gasps> down. Really? Yeah, I was As so a thankful. Drill? Yeah. Like, can't they like act like, oh, we're walking down the stairs no. and go down like two flights and then be done? No, because they pull the like the they pull the fire alarm. Yeah. The elevators go out of service, and then anyone who has. Like, but it's just a drill. I know, but they're trying to see like can we actually get out in time like or will people die <laughs> i don't think that's the goal of a fire alarm. it is it's to see that your staff the people in the building know how to evacuate if you're going down a couple stairs i feel like eventually you'll be like okay we understand you can go down some stairs and let me tell good. you how dumb i was okay because we knew that it was going to happen on this day yeah like we got an email and i totally forgot and i didn't wear the proper shoes i wore like heels to work who's wearing why are you being uh what do you call him uh uh try hard <laughs> wow relax it just went with my outfit <laughs> nah like who's wearing heels these days you shouldn't even try it when you're going well, to they the weren't office. like heels heels they were like booties but they had yeah. a heel to it they are privileged to have us there in the office now okay? true true yeah but i then was like i'm not going down 30 flight of flights of stairs with heels on so you took them off so i told Little did I realize, I told my two coworkers, like, yeah, I'm just going to take off my shoes and go down in my socks. Turns out they're both the fire wardens of our floor. <gasps> they're like, you can't tell us that. <laughs> they're like, no, you can't do that. That's even more of a hazard. Like, here. And then one of them offers me her shoes. Yeah. We both didn't think to say, oh, what size are you? Yeah. She gives me size eight flats. They're really nice what flats. What size are you? I'm a six. Eh, two inches. It actually yeah i literally almost fell to my death because it was like clown shoes on you yeah well because i'm like <laughs> you know what i was doing what first of all i wore them with socks thinking yeah. that would help but i was like my toes were trying to Spread. clutch onto the <laughs> onto the sole to like yeah. grip them <laughs> it didn't work and then the girl in front of me was like you know what mm-hmm. if you fall like i'll catch you i'm like no you won't you'll fall with me <laughs> the so. ultimate trust fall yeah, so I had to go down the flight of stairs like that. Yeah, and I was like sweating from how nervous. Well, actually, I was. you said thirty flights of stairs. I, th- I think that's I think that's fifteen. How would that be thirty? Technically, you're going two. two and up, up, down and up, or what? No, no, no. It's like so. Here's the door for the fifteenth floor, right? Yeah. You go down one, and then you go down that second one. That's a flight. That's one flight. Yeah. Even though there's two sets of stairs. Yeah. All right, the fifteenth. Exactly. Flights, whatever. Okay. <laughs> but I hit twelve thousand steps that day. And then, you, it, the, like, how many did you hit r- on average that week? When I go to the... Oh, no, 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 without the office. I don't know how to check. Why? No. So you can shame me on the podcast? Exactly. No. So I can step shame you. No, no, no. everyone should be getting at least 10,000 steps a day, okay? I do when I go for my walks. Ew, Sada. It? it looks like you only hit, like, 300 steps a day. What is this? I actually hit 800. Thank you very much. 800? Yeah. You know what I'm at right now? I'm gonna step you I'm gonna probably 7, went because you already went for your walk, didn't you? So I didn't. Yeah, I didn't go yet. You weren't gonna go. What? Yes, I was. Today? Were you? Were Absolutely. You? What, what time? After we, I had lunch at my house. No, after we have lunch, you're gonna be chilling. You'll be like, "Oh, I'm too tired. I'm gonna walk. No, I'm gonna to walk it, it off. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We'll I'm see. A, I'm gonna hold her to that today. I'm a today. late afternoon walker. Okay, I don't mm-hmm. like to do early morning. The sun walks. goes down early. You know, we don't have much time. I'm that's just saying. Right, okay. Right, okay. Right. okay. 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 Welcome back to the cousin connection podcast. So, so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're recording this another again on another Monday. So, you know, maybe this might be... Actually, no, we're not going to make this a thing. Mondays are not... No. Yeah, give me less days to edit. Yeah, right. Don't, don't promise exactly. that to them. We're going <laughs> to stick to our... You know what it is? We have just had, like, very busy weekends the past couple of weekends. Yeah. And I think, like, after next week, we'll be, like, back to our regular scheduled mm. programming. Yeah. You know what's the most depressing thing? What? for me at least, is mm-hmm. waking up past like 9.30. Do 
today i mess i leave message her i was like i can't believe i did this i woke up at 11 o'clock <laughs> like <laughs> because when, and when i saw my time when i saw did the you time sleep late? i don't think so i slept at like one o'clock whoa yeah. no slept, but that's normal that's no normal. but you slept long then yeah exactly wow. but like i don't like that anything past that i feel like my day is ruined like i wanted to go on an early walk and like and you know get some work done that kind of thing and like when you wake up that late you just feel like the whole day's over with i don't know i mean depends on how you like for someone who sleeps late i feel like waking up at 11 shouldn't bother you because you still have like the whole day the whole night too nah I, when i actually it was so bad that like past I think past the time my alarm went off. I don't remember when my alarm went off. I don't remember Did you waking turn it up. Off? I don't remember. Oh. Like, I literally... Because whenever I wake up, usually I don't remember waking up in the middle of the night. If I yeah. do, I'll check my watch. It's like, oh, you woke up at this time, but I won't yeah. even remember. Because uh, I guess sometimes I miss the alarm. I don't know how. Mm. For some reason, I think my body was trying to, like, tell me to wake up past mm -hmm. the time my alarm went off. Because I started having, like, weird, bad dreams. Yeah. Like, one of them, I was being chased in a car. And I was like stuck facing backwards, but I couldn't turn around in my seat oh, to like you were also take control the of the car. Yeah. But you were sitting in the chair backwards? Yeah. And like I tried to turn around, but like I don't know why my foot got stuck under the pedals and I couldn't turn around to like break the car and like take control of it. And then <laughs> I had, <a> man, <laughs> had multiple bad dreams. Who was I had, chasing like, you? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think I was just like out of control. Like the car was going at full speed because my foot was stuck on it. But I couldn't turn around to, so, to slow the car down. Okay. And then the second dream was like uh, my... <laughs> 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 the second dream was when you're cycling being got too full. <laughs> what? <laughs> you were did you say you're recycling? Yeah, I got too How's that a bad dream? And, and I had one more week left till garbage day. <laughs> I was, I was I don't know. Know. It was just very stressful. So you're probably figuring out, trying to figure out like yeah, what, like, I what I'm gonna do for a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most random dream. Ever. That's so random. Like, I was actually like having a stressful, like stressful thoughts. Think about like, what am I gonna do? Oh, did I forget to take out the garbage last week? Like, oh why is it so God. full? <laughs> that is actually the most random dream you could ever have. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. Okay. Did you wake up and go check the recycling bin? Yeah, I actually checked. You it. did. <laughs> it was one of those realistic dreams, eh? It was like empty. <laughs> I don't know. Oh I think it's because like the night or the couple days before my mom told me like because they're uh, not in the city. Mm. They're like, remember to, you take know, out the garbage take out stuff? the garbage. Right. Mm. I think my brain was just like putting that together. Like, oh, did I take <laughs> it out? Did I forget? And then I just oh, had a man. weird dream about that. Yeah. And then I woke up. And I, then I like jumped out of bed noticing what time it was. Today? Yeah. You know what? Mm -hmm. I forgot that we were off today. Yeah. And I didn't turn off my like weekday alarm. Oh, so yeah. guess what time I woke up? What? 5.30. 5.30? I was so angry. I was livid. Because I'm like, the one day I can sleep in. Well, you know what it saved you? Google Alerts. It actually sent me an alarm or a message the day before, a notification day before. It means like, hey, we know it's tomorrow's Thanksgiving. You might want to turn off your alarm. No. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. And That's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know. Siri, Google, step man. your game up. Android gang, guys. Android gang all day. I'm pretty sure Apple will get that in their next update next year. <laughs> <laughs> Not even next year. Give it 10 years, man. They're always behind. <laughs> uh, but oh, yeah, man. let's see what's on the docket this week. Okay, so let's talk about some local news, you know, something that's <laughs> been happening recently in a, in a city right next to Toronto called Oakville. Mm -hmm. So at, uh, I think it was called, what is it, the school's name? Ontario, no, Oakville, Oakville. Trafalgar High School. There was a teacher who uh, pulled up one day in a wig, you know, and a oh dress. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what the hell? They can't see that, okay? They will now. I'm about to break it are down. Are you about to put that on? Wait for the people who are listening to. I know, but I'm just Well, saying. they pulled up. <laughs> In in a dress, in a wig, and also giant prosthetic breasts. And, <laughs> of course, you know, te the parents had some questions. And uh, the, the students were clearly very distraught about this uh, situation. Um, so, you know, the but, but ironically enough, or not ironically enough, but mm. this school is known, or Ontario in general, mm -hmm. is really known to be super progressive. Like, to the progressive to a fault so wait for wait was like and then the, the teachers 
and the uh, the um, principal actually defended the teacher for pulling up to the school like this and said that this is their right to be able to come to a school with giant prosthetic protruding breasts that also had these nipples that were pointing out on it. Yeah. And continued to teach the classes. Like this was a teacher who was teaching a shop, like a wood shop. And you can see there's a video where they're literally like cutting wood and they're like their breasts are so big that it's almost like getting too close to the machine to where it's actually like a danger to them mm. well it's not like it'll hurt if they're prosthetic what it's not like it'll hurt well if yeah yeah but like it's a, you know it'll pull you in that's why they say don't wear necklaces and all that kind of stuff or loose fitting clothing in those in those shops you know i didn't know that i didn't know that this teacher was a transgender i thought that <laughs> so like i i didn't even read the article i just saw the photo and mm-hmm. i saw that image of the teacher in the wood shop yeah and i thought the teacher was trying to show the students an example of like why things shouldn't be in the way of the saw or whatever yeah mm. that's what i thought it was and then i started reading on it and i was like oh <laughs> like yeah what and um so of course you know the teachers and the principals they started defending this teacher saying like uh, you know, they they have a right to do this or whatever because they're trying to be super progressive and not step on anyone's toes, even though it makes literally no sense. Um, and, of course, the parents were super annoyed by this and they started protesting. The students were like, you know what's going on, that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. but it later came out or it's 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 alleged that this teacher actually is known to be anti-woke. Mm. and um is about to leave the school in almost like a giant middle finger to the school and they knew that the principals and the teachers were like this the the person who did this they they knew that the school was like this so they purposely wore this like egregious outfit knowing that they could get away with it so they're not actually trans no is all it it, allegedly is a troll like this teacher actually is anti-woke and like wanted to point out the hypocr or not hypo- hypocr- hypocrisies, but like the uh, how um, this can be abused, or like essentially like how how far off the deep end these teachers and principals and the school system and the progressive movement in general has gone. But I thought you said the principal supported the teacher. They did. So and the w- teacher is anti woke, so they're like they know that it's. Um, what do you call it again? It's going to create backlash. The teacher knew this was going to create back- backlash. Yeah. So, and they wanted to point out to everyone else how, like, far these teachers and principals have gone in, mm-hmm. like, their ideas and their things that they hold by, like, showing that, like, even if someone does something as egregious as this, mm-hmm. the teachers and the principals will support it. Or at least the principal or the board will support it. That's, yeah. That's a lot of... That's a lot of work just to prove your point. Hey, he got it. He got. He clearly made his point, right? And I, I funny, th- funny thing is that uh, there's actually some uh, like super cr- progressive like trans people saying like, you know, the, the they might actually be real breasts and like you know, there's some people who have known to have. It's like nah, bro. Like they're trying to make it, even though they know that it's prosthetic. They're trying to uh, put out like a fake story, not a fake story, but twist the story in a way to make it seem like it was real. So it, I think it just shows that like this is such a strange situation, honestly. It like, is. It is. I don't but even it's know funny. if I have much to say on this. What? But don't <laughs> you think it's funny how like I think I even mentioned it in a few podcasts ago where I was like, uh, we should just let it kind of like for me, I don't say anything about it. I just let it continue because mm-hmm. then eventually it will show how ridiculous it's getting. Mm-hmm. And I think this is probably the most extreme example of how something is so obviously like fake and like it's it's it doesn't make anyone look good i guess in a way like it's something yeah. so crazy yeah yeah they will still defend it i guess because they'd rather imagine like i th- I feel like they're if, scared of this that wrath of the internet exactly mm-hmm. if had they said like you cannot come to school even though it says here that the so it violates the thing. dress code exactly so that's another thing to point out in the story is that even if they were super progressive this alone like um, violated their dress code mm-hmm. so they should have said something about that but because they don't want to step on anyone's toes or at least the people they feel will be um, that they're more scared of which are the progressives which is ir- kind of ironic at this point mm-hmm. like they will uh, bypass their own dress code to let the teacher do whatever he wants I don't know like I feel like I'm I can understand 
especially in a school setting where you're a teacher and you have to like, you know, you're responsible for a bunch of students. I think um, I can understand the school allowing teachers to dress however they want and not have like a uniform, for example. But Mm -hmm. when what you're wearing is distracting the students from learning, like I think that's a problem. And this is a very obvious distraction so my question is there's actually a couple other stories who came out where you know how there's all this this whole bbl movement yeah and like getting just like implants and everything so there's actually a couple elementary school teachers in america who got bbls and like they like made you know super thick everywhere kind of look uh and they would wear very tight clothing mm. and they would teach in elementary school so like they weren't transgender they're just women elementary yeah yeah come on so like there's also that extreme of it too right like people mm. who they're saying oh this is my body or whatever they're not trans in any way again i just feel like okay elementary like they're young they're like bef- pre-high school right mm-hmm. so why are you like why are you dressing like that for school like what's mm-hmm. i don't know like i know people will be upset and they'll be like oh you know people should be able to dress how they want yes they should but like you're teaching kids you want kids to i mean i don't know if they notice those things i feel Mm. like nowadays they probably do because because of the internet they're exposed to everything at such a young age i just personally i just don't understand that i don't i don't know yeah for me it always comes back to like whatever happened to the idea of time and place yeah there's there's a time and place for everything yeah of course there are certain things we have to respect like religious um but bbl has nothing to do with religion yeah exactly (laughs) dressing in tight clothes has nothing to do with like you know what i mean i feel like if anything um i i want to say maybe modesty is more is uh brought up more in in people like for people who are more religious like Mm -hmm. they are more likely to dress modestly regardless of what their religion is Mm -hmm. but i don't know i personally we're trying to say guys is modesty the way follow islam (laughs) become a muslim today (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i don't know <laughs> oh That's man i mean yeah i just i don't know that kind of makes me uncomfortable what the idea of which one this teacher both. or both right both yeah it makes yeah. me like if i had a teacher like that i would feel uncomfortable i'm not gonna lie yeah because i don't think like okay modesty in islam means a thing but i think that modesty doesn't have to be tied to religion like there it's is, not there is an inherent idea of modesty that I feel like everyone can kind of understand. Yeah. Of course, maybe people can say, oh, but that's just because of the generations of um, religious indoctrination or whatever they would say. But like, I think like just common sense in general mm. can, it gives you an idea, like everyone has an idea of what modesty is. Yeah. And when it comes to teaching children, there's a reason that they have ratings for movies, mm. right? There's a reason they have ratings for... for um, uh, just general things that kids can see and listen to. Um, and we start introducing them to those things very early in life by, in cases like this, like I feel like it will really start to break down that idea of modesty and to a point where modesty is like kind of a joke in the future. Mm. Like it, the, the idea of modesty is like almost non-existent. Not necessarily. I feel like, especially in the fall time. In the school system, at least. The hijabi girls know. Mm-hmm. Fall is hijabi girl season. Yeah. You should know. But, um, And I also feel like modest fashion had a moment this year. It was pretty big. Mm-hmm. And I think it still is. Like, obviously, it's not for everyone. But I, I still feel like it's mainstream enough that it's not something that's, like, no longer existent. I wouldn't say that. Do you, do you feel like the pendulum is going to be swinging the other way soon enough? Because, like, there's... Th- I feel like everything that that has people on like not the fence, but like uh, that's usually in the public eye, yeah. like it is on some type of like pendulum, like whether it comes to politics mm. or even the idea of modesty, mm-hmm. or like I, I feel like it was on one extreme to where they're like do whatever you want, that like and almost acting like consequences don't exist, just do whatever you want, and you should be able to do whatever you want. And and don't fear the consequences. And I feel like eventually it's going to swing the other way until it finds its way in the middle. Well, I think that like there was such a big push for individualism in the last maybe like four, four to five years. Like there was mm-hmm. a really big push of like be who you are, dress how you want, freedom of expression, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, freedom of whatever X. Um, but then 
I feel like we referenced the pandemic a lot, but it really was like uh, a global shift in in culture and stuff for mm-hmm. the entire world. So the pandemic happened, and I think that people, it really shit like that was the first time that the whole world had to stay at home mm-hmm. and kind of like really think about their life and and what's important and what matters mm-hmm. to them and a lot of people because they're staying at home no longer like makeup sales are going down like mm-hmm. people p- beauty influencers who are doing tutorials stop doing it because what are you doing your makeup for to go to the living room like mm-hmm. you know so i think that in terms of dressing everyone was in sweats like there was the tie-dye sweats yeah. trend and all these different sweat like le- uh, what's it called leisure wear mm-hmm. is that what it's called home yeah. leisure what is it called let's just say set yeah whatever leisure leisure wear like the sales went through the roof because everybody was looking for comfortable comfort over um style i believe but like then there was that happy medium of you're comfortable and you're stylish mm-hmm. and and i think there will always be people who don't feel the need to cover up as much and that's that's their prerogative you mm-hmm. know what i mean like you can't who are we to say like oh you can't dress like that you know like yeah. People are going to do what they're going to do, regardless. Mm-hmm. I think there will always be um, people on this spectrum on either ends. Mm-hmm. So people who are extremely, extremely modest, where you don't even see any inch of their body. Mm-hmm. And then there are people who, they would probably walk out naked if they could. Yeah. If it wasn't illegal. Yeah, but I feel like everybody knows <clears throat> to a degree that there is a time and place for everything. Like, there's a reason. there's a reason that... People don't walk into a mosque half naked and will respectfully... Well, there are rules set in place for that um if you go to like turkey if you go to the muslim okay, countries maybe not, maybe not a mosque but like a muslim center because technically you know there aren't really mosques in north america well there are but like not i know what you mean there there are islamic centers yes the people pray yeah. there but they're not the same or maybe there are and we just don't know but they're not the same as the ones in actual muslim countries that fulfill the criteria of what is classified yeah, as a mosque exactly but like when i went to turkey like we're already hijabis right but yeah they had signs at the door where it said you had to cover your hair. You couldn't have your arms showing your legs. Your mm-hmm. you had to wear like longer um, pants or a skirt. Okay, but let's, that's that's like the point where they're actually saying it. You have to do that. But like people, if they're going to like our Islamic center or something like that, mm. they they will hesitate to just wear whatever they want. They will try and be more modest or like cover up yeah. a little bit more, just out of respect for it because someone they know that aware. there is someone who's aware. Yeah, but if it was just like a random. Do you think that, uh, yeah, I guess person. so. I guess so. Ignorance does to play a part into it. Yeah, but I think in, in general, like if, let's say, like you have a non Muslim mm-hmm. female friend and you're like, hey, you should come to my Islamic center. Mm-hmm. She might ask you if she's like um, more aware. She mm-hmm. might be like, oh, what, what should I wear? Like, should mm-hmm. I wear a shawl or something? You know, and that's yeah. fine. I think that's respectful. Um, and I think you're right. Most people are like that, mm-hmm. but there are also the ones that just don't care. They'll come however they want to dress yeah which is like whatever okay but you're going back i guess to the original story is that it shows that um that idea of showing that respect like even for people who do know what uh is required when you're in these spaces like when i when you pointed out the uh dress code Mm -hmm. they will still kind of bypass those for their own i guess agendas and like um ideas of progressiveness and I don't be, know if, letting people do whatever they want kind of thing. I, I don't know if it was more so progressiveness or fear of backlash. Backlash of like n- like not allowing someone the freedom of expression or or freedom of how to dress or whatever however you want to call it. Okay, then maybe the thing that points that uh that that this show this story shows is that now people are more fearful of the backlash mm-hmm. than the actual principle or whatever is going on. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of Instead of truly believing like, yes, we allow our teachers to dress how they want. Mm -hmm. I think the fear of being canceled or the fear of the backlash from the more progressive side of the community. That's Mm -hmm. what uh, pushed them to say, oh, yeah, we accept this, even if it goes against and deny their own rules. Yeah. Even if it goes against their own dress code, they they're going to just push for the fact that they accept it. Yeah. And it kind of happens in the Muslim community a little bit. In what way? Uh, like uh, how Muslims try and, you know, kind of skirt around some of the rules in Islam to be more um, accepted by the progressive community, if that makes sense. I don't think all Muslims do that. Not all Muslims, but mm. you see there are Muslims who are doing that. And and if they gain more traction, that can be a dangerous, not a dangerous thing, but it can be really distort the idea of what people 
believe it's not to be, I guess. But that's a larger issue, I guess. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that obviously there are, you know, if you're able to be unapologetically yourself as a mm-hmm. Muslim and you're able to practice your faith without um, allowing the fear of not being accepted or whatever mm-hmm. um, get in the way, then like that's amazing. And I think that's such a good privilege to have. Um, but then those who try to assimilate yeah, into this like, what do you call it? Pro- progressive, like modern day Muslim mm-hmm. type of thing. Um, where you allow certain things that even though they go against your religion, you you just let it slide just to be accepted. But not only that, they I guess it, it would kind of take them out of some, but they try and say that it is accepted, or at least they try and like distort the words to make it seem like it's something that's more accepted. Yeah, actually, there was mm-hmm. someone um, in, in our comments actually mm-hmm. for a lot two weeks ago when we sp- or was it last week when we spoke about the hijab issue? Was that last week? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, and someone was trying to say that. Um, women aren't even obligated to cover their hair that's one thing right there and i was like "Mm, yeah we are yeah (laughs) if we weren't obligated not no one i don't think anyone would be wearing hijab some people would but Mm -hmm. it's it's a very clear it's a general consensus yeah (laughs) like you know and and i don't even want to speak on that really because i don't want to give that person attention and if they're listening then you know they said it's no fault to them it's because they're probably surrounded by people who are probably questioning them again on their on their beliefs and being like, oh, if you believe this and you're a bad person, and because they don't have any, I guess, good examples around them of Muslims who um, are teaching in the right ways, like they try and find that one little line that might like the loophole. Yeah, one that one little loophole, even though if it doesn't exist, try and like skirt to to make them feel like they're going to be more accepted by their peers or something. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Like that that person did say that we were coming off judgmental for those who don't wear hijab, which is actually not true because Mm -hmm. we both have several family members and friends who don't wear hijab. And Mm -hmm. I've never judged someone a day in their life. I think the topic of hijab in itself is such a large topic. And and I think we will eventually cover it. Um, Have we not? Like more in depth in terms of like you know because a lot like we've ever since that one clip that we posted we've gotten a lot of requests for can you talk about like wearing a baya in the public Mm -hmm. like work work space or schools Mm -hmm. um you know the struggle of keeping your hijab on once you wear like that kind of stuff um so that'll be like a a future topic because it's such a big one that i don't want to condense it into like just Mm -hmm. one topic of an episode yeah but um no we're absolutely not judgmental at all like everyone has their own struggles like don't Mm -hmm. Just because we speak on Islam, it's because we are Muslim. It's something that relates to our everyday life, but that, that doesn't make either of us perfect in any way whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I just wanted to like throw that out there because I don't want our words to be misunderstood or our, like I'm, I don't even think we used a judgmental tone, which is why I was like, mm-hmm. how did they get that we were being judgmental in this? Like, I didn't understand. Yeah. Well, that's like just part of the course of the Internet, right? Like, yeah, you always come with your own biases when you're listening to something that's true um, yeah and if especially if you don't know the person yeah then it's very easy to kind of distort or at least mis- misinterpret what they're saying yeah and and i mean yeah you're right like no matter how clear we try to be when we speak mm-hmm. someone's always gonna misunderstand it so yeah. like you probably listened to someone before and just because you had your own biases and mm-hmm. maybe you just didn't like the person mm-hmm. you immediately took what they said as something negative you probably can't think of an example right yeah, now but it's, it's everyone's kind of done it in yeah. some way yeah um so i wouldn't be i'm not too surprised if that was the case Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. possibly did you watch the new season of rami i haven't you haven't no i only watched. have you watched any of them yeah the first season oh you watched the first season so you Mm -hmm. haven't watched the second season did i is that one with the one with mahershala Mahershala ali he was in it oh and he was like the 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 the, yeah no i watched that one okay that was season two oh yeah i watched that one and at the end of it where he gets married to his daughter yeah 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 yeah, 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 i watched that yeah so um i was watching this and like immediately as, as i was watching the show mm. i was like yeah muslims are definitely like there there's going to be a lot of muslims on the fence mm. i mean there's going to be muslims on the fence but there's gonna be a lot of muslims on like both extremes on either who hate it or mm. love it mm-hmm. uh and i was like the guy who's kind of more on the fence of it wait did you watch the whole season i watched the whole season yeah the only the only clip i saw from this new season yeah. is <laughs> this this random duo singing some song and oh yeah like bobbing keeping their head it halal like the zina thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that. and like someone's bobbing their head while someone's like shaitan is coming for you yeah you know that was magic jordan 
Oh, was that him? <laughs> yeah. I was like, like it's, it's two of them. Maj- I think Maj Jordan is two guys, no? Yeah, yeah, they're two Jordans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're two Jordans. They're two, two guys. guys. <laughs> exactly. But uh, they actually made that song in there. That, when I watched that, I was, I was dying. I thought it was really... I didn't get the context. I was like, what is mm-hmm. this? It was basically like... I feel like it was kind of dig at like Muslim Fest. Did you ever see that video of Muslim Fest recently? I've heard... No. Uh, no. I've Where heard they, of it. They had like live performers on set, on stage and everything who were like singing and dancing, doing all that kind of stuff. Oh, like similar to like, the episode. Like the clip Islamic saw. singers and stuff like Dean Squad, I think. Yeah, like Dean Squad, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And of course, that's very polarizing, right? The mm-hmm. idea of Dean Squad and all these different Do people not like run. them? I thought they had like a huge fat. Fe- well, like that's why I said it's polarizing. Right? There's a lot of people love them and a lot of people hate them. People hate them? Yeah, because like there's also different sects of Islam, right? People who don't believe this is acceptable, people who do believe it's acceptable, that mm-hmm. kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, it really just depends on like what sect of Islam you're part of and how you grew up, your culture, a lot of a lot of factors. Yeah. Um, and I feel like season three. Mm-hmm. Okay, so one thing I noted down here is that if you're gonna watch Rami, just don't think of it as like a documentary on Muslims. Like I feel like a lot of Muslims come into these shows who are made by Muslims as if it's a documentary and that it's going to represent every aspect of Islam. Mm. And like, uh, if it says wrong things here and there, like they're immediately going to point it out. It's like, just remember that this is not a documentary on Muslims. He's not going to represent every Muslim. He's not going to um, show the, depending on what the story, if it serves the story, he'll show the good sides. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, he won't. And then if it serves the story, he'll show the bad sides. If it doesn't, he won't, that kind of thing. So you can, it's, it don't expect it to follow everything that you know or like it, it's going to represent Muslims uh, as a representation of Muslims, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not like a loose representation of his life, right? Or is it? No. Okay. No. Like the funny thing is, is that Rami in the show is actually not a good person. And he clearly yeah. shows this in many um interactions in the show mm-hmm. he is not supposed to be a good person a good person or a good muslim both oh yeah in the show he's not even a, like technically he's not even a muslim oh he's oh really yeah like the, the, cuz the show is supposed to follow a journey mm-hmm. of a guy who's going through like he's like a muslim he becomes devout and then like something happens and he leaves islam and oh. then like and then it's supposed to like follow his ebbs and flows through like his journey through Islam his spiritual journey his spiritual journey and mm-hmm. season 3 is essentially him after after what happens season 2 he basically like leaves Islam like he just doesn't believe in Islam at all he 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 kind of and it's funny cuz it shows one aspect of that he's a bad person is that um even though he left Islam he uses Islam to accelerate his business opportunities and like make him a better uh he want to grow his business interesting yeah and ironically enough his business is actually selling jewelry <laughs> like chains and stuff that yeah. say like you know how you see like uh dj cal had the allah chain oh. he made that on the show and oh i think it's to point that out um did you like it the show yeah uh yeah i said well, i'd like it. it has a really good story mm-hmm. in my eyes mm-hmm. um but it's because I'm able to divorce myself from the fact that like this is not supposed to be representing Muslims, mm. which is very hard to do. And it, and even for me, it was hard to do in certain aspects because I was super uncomfortable mm. for a lot of things that were happening in here, right? Because mm. it covers a lot of taboos mm. in the Muslim community, uh, whether it's like owning a dog, whether it's, um, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, have, getting a second wife. Um, I mean, that, that doesn't go against Islam. No, not going against, like, the mm. taboos of, like, the, oh. the, the process yeah, yeah, or, yeah. like, uh, the, the um, <coughs> not biases, but, like, what is it, like, even though it's acceptable, like, there's a lot of people who, the stigma behind it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the stigma behind it. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, the different sects of Islam, like, whether mm-hmm. it comes to Sufism and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it just covers a lot of that. And depending on what you know about it or how much you are versed in your knowledge of Islam in general, you will be uncomfortable for certain things. But they do call out. Uh, the cool thing, not cool thing, I guess funny thing is that they do actually call out being like, there's one character who literally, he like visits him in jail. Mm-hmm. And uh, the dog that Rami has in the show, mm-hmm. oh, I don't know if this is a spoiler. Let's just say something happens to the dog. Mm-hmm. And then he tells the guy who used to own the dog mm-hmm. that like something happened to your dog. And this is the same character from season two okay. who recently converted to Islam okay. and then he went to jail. And you know how in jail, like there's a lot of people who there's a lot of Muslims, like I think 80 percent of the converts in America at the moment 
what is it called again? Yeah, 80, no, 80, 80% of the converts in um, jails, like people who are converting, yeah. are converting to Islam. Wow. So it's a huge Muslim population, right? Mm-hmm. But like when he tells him what happened to your his dog, he's like, oh, you know, I, I don't really mind. Like dogs are haram anyways. Like clearly just straight up. He had no emotion behind it or anything like that, right? <laughs> so uh, he calls out things like that. And overall, I think the show is, it, 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 it's, it's a good show, has a good story. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're definitely going to be uncomfortable watching it if you're a Muslim. What's if you're not a Muslim, I feel like, Hearing after hearing a podcast from Andrew Schultz, mm-hmm. uh, who I mentioned last week, yeah, uh, the Flagrant podcast, he actually had Rami on for a podcast, mm-hmm. and the interesting thing is that I don't know if this is a good thing for me. I thought it was a good thing, but like uh, Andrew, who is not Muslim, mm-hmm. was actually introduced to a lot of rules and like things in Islam that he didn't know, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like for people who don't know anything about Islam, this might be their introduction, which. People will be like, uh, this is, you know, this is not the best introduction to Islam. Yeah. Um, but at least they have some idea. Yeah. And at least they know the issues that might go on with the, within, the communi- communi- it, within the Muslim community that they're not aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, so depending on how you feel about that, that really is going to paint like whether you like this show or not. Or like what you, what, how you see the show, I mean. I mean, I don't think... I don't think Ra- like his name is Rami in real yeah. life too, right? He said he hates the fact that he called the character Rami yeah. and he himself is called Rami because they're completely different people. And people probably think that's how he is in exactly, real life. Exactly, exactly. And in real life he's really he like he's like everybody says he's a really good person and all that stuff. And that's what I was going to say is that, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think maybe may, yeah, maybe he should have picked a different name for the character yeah. because I don't think he thought that Maybe he did know that the mm-hmm. show would kind of get the sort of both ends of the reactions. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if he's really, if he cares to be like a Muslim role model. Like, I don't think that was his intention at all. So I don't mm-hmm. think he cares to represent. Like, I don't think he's even coming into this saying like, I'm going to be representing Islam. Like, no, I, he's he just probably saying it like, I'm going to be telling my story or. And not even his story. It's not just his a story, story, but like, yeah, a story. Yeah. Um, whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. And and if people want to take it as like, oh, you're representing Islam, like, I don't think he sees it that way. Yeah. So. But um, would you watch the sh- would you watch? Would you watch the new season? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. You should watch it. You I can finish watched, it in a day. Yeah, I already, isn't it like 20 minute episodes? Yeah, it's 20 minute mm-hmm. episodes. You can finish it pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I just, I didn't know it was out until I saw that clip. I was like, oh, is this Yeah, because it's out on Hulu in America, which mm. is not available to us. So I, of course, you have to find it in certain ways. Wait until I get to Gizman's <laughs> house and then just watch it there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> we can watch it all together. <laughs> mm-hmm. But but also, the thing I really liked about his show is that mm-hmm. he has, his character mm-hmm. at one point, has he, he does some dealings with Israelis, with uh, Jewish mm-hmm. people. Um, and their boss is in Israel. So he has to go to Israel oh. and like make dealings with them or whatever, right? Um, but of course, when he goes to Israel, it shows it shows a lot of... That episode alone, mm-hmm. I feel like, is a good standalone episode for people to see um, basically what's going on in Israel. I'm surprised he was able to get away with making this episode in Israel. Oh, he actually, he actually went, went there? He went there oh. and filmed there. And they show like how pal- people who are Palestinian mm. have a hard time getting into the country by showing his uncle, who was eventually was not able to get into the country, even though he flew all the way to Israel. He was happy. He was like, I'm finally getting to see my motherland. But he wow. was stopped at the border, and he wasn't allowed to stay in the country. Oh, so Rami's Palestinian. Uh, his uncle is. His his dad is Egyptian, and his mom is Palestinian. Gotcha. Um, and then also it shows like um, how checkpoints work. Mm-hmm. And when going from the, um, is the supposed Israeli side to the Pasti- Palestinian side. The border, basically. The border, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it's funny. I don't know if I should spoil You know what? I'm just going to say this part. So like. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> so there's just an interesting conversation here is that he was going across the border to meet up with a girl. I guess he found her on like Tinder or whatever. Mm-hmm. And when he gets to the checkpoint, you can see it's like all paved and nice or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he has some issues there. He finally gets through. He goes to the girl's house and he's talking to her. And um, he was talking about the checkpoint. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, I used to be made of like mud 
and like it was like super like just worn down and trashy yeah and he's like oh but you know it's nice now right they made it all concrete you know they put in some like good metal everything looks clean Mm -hmm. and she's like i preferred it being dirty because because when it's cleaned up like that and they made it and they put all this investment into it it feels more permanent oh yeah so there's an aspect to these things that you don't even think about like you were thinking oh why would she be annoyed by that but you don't think about the psychology behind it right Mm -hmm. when they make it something that's when they invest money into it and make it more permanent Mm -hmm. it it reinforces that idea that this is going to go on forever guys yeah just get used to it basically right and the fact that i don't know how he got away with making this episode and it shows how like there's a aspect or a part of the episode where uh he has to get back across the um uh, checkpoint right mm-hmm. but uh because he was gonna be late for a meeting mm-hmm. so he borrows aka steals a kid's bike <laughs> to get to the checkpoint faster right mm-hmm. but uh his friends come and like and kick him off the bike and they like uh, they take his jacket from him mm-hmm. and his jacket happened to have his passport in it oh shit. so when they uh when he went to the checkpoint yeah and they asked him for his passport. He's like, I, I, I don't have my passport. You know, like uh, these kids stole it from me. Mm-hmm. And immediately guards like, these kids stole it from you? What did they do? Where do they live? <gasps> and then he didn't realize what was happening, right? Yeah. He got into the, the and at that point, the guards were being super nice to him. Like super, like, we're, we're going to get these kids. We're going to make sure they pay or whatever. Oh my God. And they God. go to the house. <gasps> and then they like take the kid out, mm-hmm. put him in a car and take him to jail or whatever. Oh, shoot. And then uh, the person he was dealing with in Israel, mm-hmm. the m- person he was meeting with, mm-hmm. He felt really bad for the kid, right? Yeah. So he goes up to, doesn't go up to her. He mentions to the lady about this story about the kid or whatever. And she's like, oh, you know what? I'll take care of it. I'll make sure that the kid is taken care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, shoot, I feel I'm really messing. This. Whatever. Okay. He he, he tells the kid, uh, I mean, he tells uh, Rami that like, okay, I'll take care of um, the kid or everything. I'll make sure he gets out. I know some people in the higher up government. And then later on in the season, it's mm-hmm. revealed that she didn't do anything. And then he found out by going to the Muslim Fest mm-hmm. and they're raising funds to get this kid out of jail. Oh my God, that he basically yeah, put in jail. Yeah. <gasps> he probably felt so bad. Of course he did. Mm-mm. And it was actually played a big part into his 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 character arc. But yeah. I'm, I'm going le- to leave that to the rest of you to watch. Of mm-hmm. course, there's a lot more that goes on in this show. So that's just a little bit of a spoiler. Mm-hmm. But it gives you an idea of like the, like the how he incorporates a lot of the issues that Muslims are kind of like dealing with i guess yeah uh not only religiously but like from a political standpoint as well i don't know i I just i thought it was a really good episode yeah no i'll watch it yeah like even if you're not gonna watch rami if you're not interested in watching rami yeah i feel like you should watch it just for that episode yeah yeah it does have a little weird parts Mm -hmm. but i think that's because he's a comedian and it like just kind of goes off the wall a bit but you know Mm -hmm. it's fine you know it it serves I don't know if it serves the story, but like the the overall story, I feel like kind of um, um, lets you look past those parts. <laughs> mm. I'll watch it. You should. You should definitely watch it. I'll give it a shot. Mm-hmm. If y'all don't know, there's a internet uh, quartet. <laughs> Are they a quartet? I thought yeah, it was which is them. now which is now the trio. Mm-hmm. The Try Guys are now the Try Guys with a T R I, not a T R Y. Huh? Funny? That was a no. Dad joke. Okay, but slow clap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, so these guys, I've been following them since like their BuzzFeed days. Mm-hmm. So there's a four, a group of four guys mm-hmm. um, on YouTube called the Try Guys. They basically are they do group activities and they try different things, basically in their name. <laughs> Such a um, simple, <laughs> simple concept. But because of that simple concept, mm-hmm. I feel like they really attracted a large audience. Mm-hmm. They were able eventually they were able to. Uh, depart from BuzzFeed and make their own channel Mm -hmm. and they've been blowing up ever since Mm -hmm. and now they're making their own TV show they're on Broadway they had all these things going on on Broadway? yeah doing what? and that was recent that was recent well what are they doing on Broadway? two of the guys two of the guys like singing? I I don't know they do stuff what the hell do they do? like I'm just I don't know. That's not important to the story. Okay? I know. It's just random. Like but Broadway. Okay. Whatever. Good for them. Well um, as they're blowing up and they're reaching their peak of course one of the guys chose to do something that would just destroy almost destroy it all so ned from the try guys who is known who is known as the guy who says my wife in almost literally (laughs) every episode Mm -hmm. was found cheating publicly publicly with on his wife 
And when I say publicly, I mean like he was in the middle of New York. He was in the middle of New York having dinner with this girl and but, then went to a bar that same night with that girl. Like someone could have followed them, but I think someone did. Oh. And go to that bar and saw them like dancing and kissing on each other. If it just stopped at the dinner, I'd be like, that's just an assumption. It could have been his agent or something, his manager. But then uh, the bar part. No, I people think... knew because this girl was also on camera as well. Oh, she was like, like an on like she worked for them, but she was oh, also in some videos as well. And uh, that's ugly. Yeah. And and it's actually funny how she found out. Because this girl was also in a relationship mm -hmm. for ten years with another guy. Oh my god. I think who also worked at the company. And what essentially happened is that those people found took those pictures of them taking di having dinner and like kissing up at the club. And then they sent it to the as a DM to the guy, her her boyfriend. Who then sent it to Ned's wife and was like, <laughs> "Yo, what's going on here?" Yeah, and then that's when it blew up. And I think this was over like Labor Day weekend. Okay, so like a month ago. Yeah, a month mm -hmm. ago. And the Try Guys like they immediately when they found out they immediately like put him on leave, or whatever. They started getting the lawyers involved and like kicked him out as fast as they could. They're yeah. not trying to take no smoke for somebody else's no. mistake. They're like, "Bye, no. Ned." Because like when your brand, mm. when your brand is literally just you talking about your wife, mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, like what are you gonna do? Like you can't, you can't really recover from that. Yeah. Right. And um, it also just it's in a. It would be it would be one thing if it was um, if it was just a random girl, mm -hmm. but when it turns out to be someone that they're working with which mm -hmm. everyone works with mm -hmm. that be brings a whole nother aspect into it because then you're dealing with like a power dynamic right because he's the boss of that girl right which is a big thing that's been um uh, talked about on the internet especially with the whole me too movement yeah with that power dynamic like with uh, what's his name that guy who uh the director who like made a bunch of actresses like do stuff for him oh um, what was his name again I forget what his name was, yeah, but his name's not important. You know, he's an abuser anyways. <laughs> but um, like there are a lot of executives taking advantage of lower workers. But it's just like anyone who... Or employees, I mean. Anyone who made it. Mm -hmm. Like why? Why is it that it's... I mean, I'm sure people who haven't made it, like they cheat too. But like it's always the ones that made it. Their story comes out that they cheat. Like why are you cheating? Like I just want to... I don't understand the psychology behind... I think it's a power that. dynamic thing. How? Like just having that ability, just like, oh shit. to just like walk out or not walk out, but like to just go cheat feel, on your partner like that. I don't because uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of hard to get into the head of someone who does that, especially if you don't think that let's, way. Let's find a cheater and interview. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> yeah, because even for me, like it's so hard to wrap my head around the fact that you had everything going for you. Mm. You have a wife. You mm -hmm. have kids. Mm -hmm. Like, you have a happy family. You're making the most money you've ever made in your life. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has kids, too? Yeah, he has kids, too. Mm -mm. And he, Come on, Ned. Like, he came out with a cookbook with his wife. Come on, Ned. You had a cookbook and you did this? And he's, like, the most, like, he's a red-haired, like, he's typical a ginger white too? dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, he, he seems like the most, like... Um, wholesome guy? Wholesome guy, essentially, yeah. right? He was the family man. Of the of the whole the whole quartet, I guess. Don't let the looks fool you, Amir. Okay. I, but it just it just seems so out of place, and of course we haven't heard from him yet. Oh, is he or just like, like people? He he's made like a statement saying like oh, you know I feel bad blah blah that kind of thing, but there's no video of him like explaining what happened, and I don't think he has to put out a video of that. But I feel like for people who feel like they're invested in them, mm. it, it, to them it feels like a betrayal, and of course it is a betrayal in a way, right? Because you yeah, presented yourself as one one thing, and you were a completely different thing. Do you think the pressure of him being the wholesome family wife guy got to him, and that's why he acted out, or do you think it's something deeper than that? Um, I don't, I don't know. That's the thing. Like you don't know if this person was just acting the whole time, even to his own Ooh. wife. Like maybe he was. That's um, messed up. I wouldn't say a bad person, but maybe he was just like, he had some demons that he had to work out that he never did. Mm. Uh, and he just found himself in too deep at that point. <laughs> but I don't know. It, it, and I think it was going on for like a year or something like that before that. Before Whoa, that. Yeah. he was cheating on her for a whole year? I don't know how long, but it's been oh. going on for a while, apparently. Like when they called him out on it, on yeah, it, yeah. he's like, yeah, it's been going on for a while. Like it, it wasn't that one instance where it happened. Like it was already a thing. Yeah, let's find a cheater and get them on the podcast. Because <laughs> now I'm just like, I want to know. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to look for them. Calling you know all anything? cheaters. Did you know anything about the Try Guys before this? 
Uh, I used to. I remember I used to see their uh, BuzzFeed article so a while ago. But you never watched them? Not since they made the transition to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Or like the. I don't even know that they had a TV show. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Well, that one's actually literally, it just came out. Like the reason they were in New York yeah. was for the TV show. Like to promote it? Yeah, to like for it to come out. Well, they can't cut his scenes out now. The show's already made. Well, what they're actually doing now, well, I think they're going to rework everything because what they did oh. is essentially um, when they first found out, mm-hmm. they started like editing him out of like previous videos, like cutting him out, well, that kind of thing. That's so extreme. Is it so that they don't have to pay him royalties and stuff? I think because they just don't want anything to do with him. Damn. So they start going back <laughs> into their history and deleting him from older videos. Damn, it's that serious? Yeah, and like all the, because they already... Vi- edit these videos ahead of time right yeah so or film them i mean Mm -hmm. so they actually started re-editing their episodes they already had like down the line to cut him out of it basically that's kind of extreme do you think oh why would you have someone like that in your episodes look at like all those people who like one direction or or all those bands that lose a member they don't just cut out the verse from that one person who left the band it's it's the reason that they're cutting him out right like those bands when they lose that person they don't lose them because they're cheating they lose them because they just don't want to be in the band anymore. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and especially when it goes against your brand. And, mm. like, you're thinking you're thinking he just cheated, but this is not only cheating. Like, this is going against your brand that you've built up as a character. Yeah. And it's dealing with a power dynamic where you're, where you're cheating with uh, an employee. An employee, yeah, okay. Right? Because you don't know. You employee. don't know if he, when he did this, she felt like if she said no, she would get fired or mm. th- this might affect... As some aspect of his her future career or whatever mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so she might have just done it to not um cause any issues that's pretty messed up yeah that uh, people are saying oh that's probably not the case like she's probably into it the whole time but you never know right uh it's just it's just re- a really weird and awkward situation that just came out of nowhere very unfortunate event yeah so you have no ties to this at all because for me i was like what like because i i watched them before so i'll subscribe to them already oh yeah no i don't, I don't feel any emotions so it's just like yeah you're a shitty mm-hmm. person that's about it <laughs> 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 not much else to it <laughs> who would who would be that person for you then like that came out russell uh, wilson who the hell's russell oh, wilson sierra's husband oh or like who i'm trying to think of someone who i don't think i don't think because i don't Jonas? No, actually, you'd like, probably be happy if he cheated on. His- <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Okay. Unless it was with me. <laughs> no, oh my god. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't think I'm like as attached to the lives of celebrities anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, like maybe if like you know someone that I no, I don't even look up to them. So like, but like you know people that you think would stay together forever. Like mm-hmm. if they broke up, I'd be like, oh, that's so like that's shocking. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't wouldn't like so you can't think of anyone like that no because i feel like in hollywood it like it kind of just it happens so often that it's almost yeah but like, now, wow, it's, you now it's spreading you? like outside of hollywood now it's like youtubers and even them like what's mm. the lifespan of a youtube relationship yeah how many of them have broken up no no, no but this is like a wife and kids in fact like yeah. he had this family before youtube yeah but money, his kids are older money and fame changes, changes people mm-hmm. or no it doesn't change people it just uh exposes the the who you are it it it, it doesn't change you but it, it gives you more opportunities there's a, there's that you saying. shouldn't always no, no, have there's a saying for that what do you let, one, let me google this me google what it. is it called also don't do you have a thing over. Thing on do you know who's yeah whatever there, there's a better line but essentially it's like money doesn't change people it just reveals who they really are if that makes sense mm. it does I'm telling you, money doesn't change people. So you're saying if someone cheats, like that's just their identity, they're just a cheater, or is it like because because I think so, I've I've seen when like it's why an aspect people of cheat. who they are. Is it? Yeah. What if it's like a one-time mistake? Um, I guess that goes between that that goes to the idea of like once a cheater, always a cheater, or that's just a mistake they made. I really think we should find a cheater. No. If you're an ex-cheater, like you've cheated in the past, like. Reach out to us. Like, let's have a conversation. No, We're gonna have an part open. Part of my brand. No, I it's don't okay. Think I, have a cheater here <laughs> next time, okay? I think I no, but if they're like they've recovered from their cheating ways, maybe, mm-hmm. or if you're still currently a cheater and you don't mind putting yourself on blast, like, reach out to us, okay? Because I feel like we can have a really good conversation here. <sighs> we'll you know? talk about this. We'll talk about this. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just I think it's an interesting topic. I'm just now. I'm just curious. I but just don't you ask. believe that that money doesn't change people? 
It, do, it does change people, I think. I don't believe it changes people. Or do you think like... You know what? Let's, let's take a break real, big, quick, real quick and yeah. we'll come back to this, okay? Because okay. I, I want to go deeper into this. Okay, and we're back. Okay, let's, let's, go, let's get into this. So yeah. I don't believe that money changes people. I think it does. Because no. are you trying to say that like... I don't want to call someone poor, but let's say they they are they're not rich yet mm -hmm. but let's say they're starting a business right yeah so they're they're dedicated they're doing whatever they're a hard worker mm -hmm. they now make it so now they're considered successful mm -hmm. and then they start doing these things that they weren't doing before they made it no are you I saying that they inherently they had those traits within them but they were just waiting for that opportunity to no when i say when i say it doesn't change people i mean like who they are as a person of course your 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 status as a like you're going to be in a different tax bracket. You're going to be living in a different place. That If you think about those changes, of course, but you as a person, like if you were a bad person, whether you have money or you don't have money, doesn't change anything. Yeah, that. Yeah, that, like I maybe mean. maybe because you didn't have any power, you could, you could, uh, you mask yourself as being a bad person. But once you got money and you had the opportunity to like do something bad towards someone who might have done something to you mm. and you took that chance, that just reveals who you are. Like, like, uh, look at Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast, mm -hmm. like, he is he is a good person. Mm -hmm. Even before even before he made money, like, mm -hmm. he had the uh, the 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 drive to help people right. and to do good things. Mm -hmm. And it clearly shows that he didn't he he um, he wasn't using it as a mask or like it wasn't a fake. It wasn't a front mm -hmm. because when he actually started making hundreds of millions of dollars, he uses all that money to help people. Yeah, that's true. Like he literally created a channel just so he can um, like put money. it towards a food bank. Oh wow! Yeah, and he literally feeds hundreds of thousand people a day. I don't know. I just and like okay, good and bad are like are are we're talking about two extremes, right? Yeah. But there are people in the middle. Yeah. Where like aren't necessarily good or not aren't necessarily bad. Yeah. When they have like. Um, what do you call it? Whether they had the money or not, mm -hmm. like they, they're not gonna go out and start doing good things with it or whatever and they're not gonna go out and start doing bad things i don't know i'm just trying to say like uh, you're pro you might be just thinking of extremes like don't think of extremes i just okay. feel like uh, money doesn't change people who as who they are i i won't think of an extreme but i'm thinking of it like let's say there's a person who's not super good and not super bad they're just in the middle like you said mm -hmm. but they don't have enough money and let's say they they want to do something like oh you know i i wish i could donate to mm -hmm. a charitable cause but i don't have the i don't have extra funds so every time they're at any sort of like community event people ask for donations and this person doesn't give donations mm -hmm. from a outside perspective they're like oh that person's so stingy they never give donations mm -hmm. and then let's say now they make it and now they have an abundance of wealth so they can give as much money so people are like oh look they he made this person made a lot of money and now they're donating all the time mm -hmm. from an outside perspective you're like oh they changed for the better. They used to never donate, and now they do. That's from someone else's aspect of looking at them. But like as that person didn't change, they, they always had the intention of donating when they had the ability. Mm -hmm. And now that they have the ability, they are donating. So they didn't change. They just have access to that money that they always wanted to be able to uh, do the things that they wanted to do. Okay, so I think it just comes down to like people are who they are, but mm -hmm. the amount of money they have really dictates what they can and can't do yeah okay on that i agree with that yeah and like the amount of money you have won't like a person uh what do you call it like there are there are there are people who are um what do you call it? like they they present themselves as being morally good mm -hmm. and everything and and to go back to that story they'll be like oh you know if i had the money i'll donate everything yeah i'll make sure my community is good i'll take yeah. care of everyone yeah and then the moment they ha have money they're like now nah, forget y'all they move into a new neighborhood and they don't talk to you again mm -hmm. that just revealed who they really were they didn't really care for you they were just talking all that stuff mm -hmm. so they can prop themselves up make themselves look good when but once they make that money they move away and they don't talk to you ever again and I it mean, shows that they never really had the proper intentions to begin with i mean i don't necessarily agree with that because maybe their their intentions were pure they really wanted to help the community but the minute they started making money people started to expect that from them and when people expect things from you, it's almost like you don't want to do it because you're like, I want to give it to you out of the goodness of my heart, not because you're sitting there demanding money from me. Well, that didn't, they didn't change then. They just don't want to feel like they're being um, um, like, exploited. That's fair. That like, doesn't make them a bad person. I don't want to be exploited. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, so they didn't change. If, if someone feels like they're being exploited, hmm. like it doesn't change. Uh, and 
but then again, that also being a good person, like if if you were a truly on like good good person, you didn't really care about the people's ideas of you, then you would still probably do it. But that's probably uh, uh, an example of someone who's like more in the middle. Like yeah. they want to do good, but if they feel like they're doing, if if they feel like the people who are um, they're doing it for are exploiting them for it, mm-hmm. then they might not do it. But they're like that's just who they are as a person. But I feel like if you have that much money, you're a little bit more in tune and a little bit more like smart about how you spend it. You don't just mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like when you donate, obviously, like you do, you're not, you're not just throwing out money because you're obviously trying to continue to build your wealth. You're not trying to just get but rid of it How do they change all. as a person? Yeah, you have to, you have to set, you have to first set like the grounds as this person. Okay, this person has no money and this is who they are. Yeah. And then like, when they have that money, who, what did they do with it? That kind of mm. thing. It's a simple uh, scenario you have to break down, right? Like you say, like the scenarios we gave where we said the person who didn't have money but had the intention of donating, mm-hmm. um, but whenever they made the money, mm-hmm. the person who did donate, it shows that like they, were, they weren't masking themselves the whole time. They weren't trying mm. to put up a front in any way. But the person who uh, didn't donate, it shows that the whole time they were just fronting. Like they weren't actually in... in intending to do any of those things or then maybe so consciously they didn't realize they weren't going to do it or yeah because i feel like it's such a common like scenario that people always say like oh you know the money changed you like you're mm-hmm. you're making big money now so you're different i feel like they all like that's such a common thing to say to people which is pretty condescending actually mm-hmm. <laughs> um so like you're i i can understand your point i i see what you mean yeah i think i just have to change the way that i like my perspective of it Mm -hmm. because i've always it's not that i've thought of that of other people like even in our lives like i don't know like for those people that i know that are making a lot of money they've kind Mm -hmm. of remained the same yeah (laughs) so i i don't like in the same in the sense of like their their core values and beliefs haven't changed yeah exactly so you, you you see you clearly have good examples in front of you like real life examples where you see that money didn't change people i feel like it changes celebrities though and it might not be the money that changes them it might be the fame well then again that's a parasocial relationship you think you know the celebrity but you, you don't know them but for example what okay let's like there are people who give me an example of someone you know as an individual as a celebrity then you can't really use them examples you don't but, know them but it's like very like amir it's like it's like one of those examples you where only see what they want you to see no, sometimes they get caught with things that they don't want you to see, but it comes out anyways. Like when they're rude to staff at any sort of exactly, so hotel. it's revealing who they really are. But pre fame and and still with those stories, you can't believe those stories because that person who came out with that story might have an ulterior motive. So you're gaslighting them now. What you're gaslighting who? them now? The staff. What do you mean? You just said those people that came out with the stories might have ulterior motives. Yeah, because you you never know. I don't believe anything you see. You shouldn't believe anything you see about a person until you have like um multiple sources that can confirm those facts i mean maybe because you're not into pop culture as much but there are some celebrities who are known to be like disrespectful people mm-hmm. they're just they're known because of several people's experience with you them. literally just confirmed what i said i said multiple sources that can confirm this. whatever <laughs> Anyways, my point is yeah okay obviously like i'm not gonna listen to like one off like someone says will smith comes to the hotel they're like he was so rude like exactly that's one person yeah yeah i'm not saying i believe that either like i agree it's when multiple people speak up on it like you you but ultimately you still don't know those people you don't know who they are in their homes so you can't really use any scenarios trying to judge them but i'm here it's human nature to judge you judge based oh yeah you can but like your 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 hypothetical won't be valid I think it's still valid. Whatever. I forget what your hypothetical yeah, me hypothetical too. is going to be. <laughs> what was I trying to say? Again? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> you were talking about like. Does money change people? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about how celebrities, you've seen them change. Because but of I, fame, not because of the wealth. Huh? Because when you're famous and you can literally get away with anything. Mm-hmm. Like look at Tristan Thompson. Well, because they have power now, right? He's cheated on Chloe so many times. Yeah, but times. how do you know that they weren't that kind of person to begin with? I mean, he's a Brampton man, so that speaks for himself. There you go, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, using people, like actual people as examples is very... Celebrities are actual people too, by the way. No, I'm, yeah, that's what I mean. Actual uh, people, like celebrities as examples Yeah, doesn't really work if you don't know them as a person. Like 
you like you know who they are you've seen you've seen where they came from and who they are that kind of thing right because yeah. you've only seen what they show you and, and there are clear examples of where like even paparazzi and all that stuff is all mm-hmm. kind of fake in a way too yeah a lot of times they just get called yeah exactly um on the topic of money <laughs> oh yeah well there were the lack of depending on who you are lack of. there's just been there's been this push recently um by the alberta government to recruit ontario ontarians torontonians mostly torontonians but people in ontario to move to alberta like maybe it's to help their economy i'm not really sure mm-hmm. they're just trying to recruit all of us over there and i've been getting so many ads like so many ads on social media when you say social media you know you, you just say tiktok and instagram yeah okay <laughs> and instagram it's both of them really but like i've been getting and even youtube oh okay because i've only been getting them on like tiktok and it's always that one white girl you see what i'm talking about the one who's like the big lips <laughs> <laughs> yeah i actually know what you're talking about we can probably find her <laughs> when i get the ad which i do like every yeah. time i open it <laughs> but like has it ever made you like stop and consider like should I go out there? Is the winter I've, really we've winter? talked about this hundreds of times. I always consider moving outside to like Alberta or somewhere. The only thing that's holding me back is the family. But if you're within Canada, you can just take a domestic flight right back. Have you seen the price? We've talked about this too. Have yeah, you seen the have, prices of have, domestic flights in the city, in this country? Have. Yeah. They're yeah. literally more expensive than dri- flying to like Europe. No. Yes. No, it's yes, not. Yes, they are. No, well, that's extreme. You know what? Let's pull it up right now. We're pulling up. So Toronto to London for a two-week trip in November is eight hundred and thirty dollars Canadian. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oops, can't even spell to save my life. Where are we doing for within Canada, BC or Alberta? BC. What? What's a major city in B- Victoria? Vancouver. Oh. <laughs> Sarah. Um. First to the 14th. Look at how cheap that is. That's pretty oh, good. Actually, that's pretty, you want to go to Vancouver? <laughs> Yo, low key. Let's go over Christmas break. No, no, no. Oh my God. Okay. Toronto to Vancouver, November 1st to the okay, 14th. Okay. 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 Whatever. It's also Lynx Air. I've literally never heard of that. Yeah. I've never life. heard of Lynx either. Okay. A normal ticket. <laughs> Air Canada. Okay. I don't know what happened with the flight tickets. 278. They I don't heard know what our happened podcast. With the flight tickets. I think they heard our podcast. They heard now apparently criticism. it's, you know, maybe this is because of the mass, mass exodus from Toronto or Ontario in general that oh. this is happening. You know what? Now I'm curious. I want to see how much it is to go to like Calgary. Calgary is probably oh it's relatively the same two twelve twelve okay it's not too bad yeah mm-hmm. okay why is it so cheap now oh I, I think it's know. because the summer's over oh it's cold there yeah yeah that makes sense um okay so what were we saying here the high number of ads I mean we've talked about it before but like now it's kind of just like in our faces at all times like move to Alberta it's great opportunities and they're really marketing marketing it to young people like millennials mm-hmm. and i guess some gen z now because they're all in their 20s yeah right i'm pretty sure they are in, in in their 20s but they're they're marketing the lower um cost of living and house prices which yeah. is like what we complain about here all the time yeah like i think it's the issue the issue is that like for us specifically mm-hmm. i think we're i think we'll be okay because we, now we have like generational wealth we have um Fam- big families here like you won't really have to worry about or struggle with when you're in the city especially if you have family who can support you but this is going to be really big for like people who are have smaller families right or, or parents like our parents immigrated here so we might not have the exact same fair chance mm-hmm. as someone who's like third fourth or fifth generation canadian we're literally first generation yeah so we don't have that head start that other people that their families like grandparents and great-grandparents grew up here mm-hmm. um but i don't know like will we be okay because sometimes Wait, did I you sh- say immigrants yeah. are com- because actually the thing that the city is trying to like plug that hole with mm-hmm. is immigrants like the reason so because of this mass exodus mm-hmm. like ontario has been recruiting a lot more immigrants to our to to the province they've uh, been bringing them in yeah like, I saw by that too. And, hundreds of thousands and they also something about their credentials like they're gonna start to accept like, yeah if someone's a doctor in another country they might actually yeah like accept because there has been here. there has been a lot of also doctors and nurses leaving not yeah, only not only the, the province but even the country 
yeah it's it's um like travel nursing is so big now mm-hmm. especially ever since the pandemic like we've spoken about this too nurses mm-hmm. any medical or healthcare professional has been like extremely overworked in the last like yeah. two three years because they're like peace out i'm gonna get paid more in america or europe or wherever it is yeah. they're going like because ontario kind of has lost a lot of its incentives for staying here yeah like can you name me a few incentives outside of the family that we've mentioned like as an individual if you came to ontario what are your incentives to stay here i think as a person of color as a muslim the thing that would entice me to want to come here is maybe the multiculturalism like to toronto specifically is multiculturalism really i think something that w- would keep you to stay in a city and overpay for everything no, but I think it's something that's it's like one thing on the list because it's uh, a minor incentive if anything. It's yeah, it's a minor incentive, but when you're thinking when you're thinking about your safety and wanting to raise a family, like you want to pick a city that's safe, right? Like you don't want to have to worry about you know, are they going to ban hijabs tomorrow and I can't go to work or whatever school? Um or are they, you know, are they is it like the south in America where you're worried if you're black that you can't even go for a jog down the street like you know what I mean? Like you have to worry about your safety too, and how are safe those things you really have to worry about in other places on in Canada? I don't think so. Oh, I think there are some racists and like yeah, but I don't think those are things you have to really worry about in like a majority of Canada, at least in major cities in Canada. Major cities, yeah, no, yeah. you don't have. To and worry when we about talk that. about people leaving, like they're not going to like the boonies; they're going to major cities like Edmonton, Calgary. But when you think about um, it, because they're, they're marketing. Alberta as low cost of living, low house prices, high wages, etc. Mm-hmm. But it's very basic economics, like supply and demand, right? Like mm-hmm. if all these people from Toronto or Ontario move over to Alberta, the demand for houses is going to be high. So the prices are going to skyrocket. Cost of living is going to go up. Wages hopefully will continue to go up. I don't know if they have the same problem as here, mm-hmm. but... I but just, have you seen those cities? Like they have so much more room They do for infrastructure to grow yeah that's true you know, the people in the city like we have the worst infrastructure in of any city in the world in any major city in the world mm. and there's clearly we always talk about the bad traffic and the bad construction yeah. there's no incentive for these people to make it any better so it just seems to pile on and get worse and worse there's more condos going up like where do you think all these people in the condos are going to park where do you think they're going to um uh, what roads are going to take, especially for these condos that are being put up outside of the city. Mm-hmm. Like these people are driving. They're going to go on the highways. You know, where are these people going to go? They're going to in congest the highways. Listen, the way things are going, Alberta is sounding kind of nice. <laughs> nah, but no, for, you have to be for real about it. <laughs> I like, know, would I you know. actually go? Yeah, well, I, I went last year. No, would you go to live there? I mean, I don't know if I would. The do answer is no. I know you say your answer is no. No, actually. Okay, remember how we spoke about like every time we travel? Yeah. Um, like the first day you're there, you're like, I can, I can see myself living here. I mm-hmm. did that when I was there last year, and I, yeah. I went to both Edmonton and, um, Calgary and and mm-hmm. Banff too. But like, I was like, you know what? I could I could see myself living here. It's not that bad. Mm-hmm. But what's stopping you? Because I told you to name the. Because I'm afraid of change. Gosh, why are you calling me out? Uh, I th- I think it's more. I think it's more than that. I don't know. It's because. Like we were talking about incentives, right? Like the only thing you can mention was like multiculturalism. Oh, from st- for staying here, you mean? Yeah. <sighs> and like you mentioned safety, but I feel like if you're if if you're moving to the boonies, sure. But if you're moving to a city like Edmonton or Calgary, which has a lot of our people there, a lot of Somali, like um, East Africans, uh, East in general, Africans in general, Muslims. Muslims. So it's not like you're gonna be alone. Alone. I mean, listen. Now that I'm gonna be turning thirty next month, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just have to reevaluate my life. But if mm-hmm. I make that move, would you move too or would you stay here? Me? Mm-hmm. No, I'd have to stay on time. Why, why do you want to stay here? What? You literally hate it here. Yeah, but I like like I mentioned earlier, we have the generational wealth. We have mm-hmm. the resources to stay here. I feel we like do. we'll be okay. Yeah, but at the same time, like even like sometimes the thought of just going out really like grinds my gears. What like the thought out? of having to sit in traffic in the f- on the 401 yeah or like oh let's go to this food place in mississauga don't lie we're always like mississauga oh mm-hmm. my god like well that's because we put that on ourselves you don't have to go to mississauga for a food place and we don't yeah. <laughs> but i'm saying like the thought of just driving in this city is so dreadful now mm-hmm. whereas like if i was in well now we have the options to just find jobs 
that are fully work from home, which is what a lot of people are doing. And that's yeah. another big reason people are moving to these places outside of the mm. city is because they're like, okay, I can just find a job yep. that's maybe even in America, which pays two times, three times mm -hmm. the amount. Uh, and I don't have to leave my house. Yeah. Actually, I saw a TikTok about a girl who's employed by a U.S. company, mm -hmm. but she lives in Canada. Yeah. And I think she only has to go into the office like once a month. Yeah. So she'll cross the border, go to her job, because she lives close enough to a yeah. border. She crosses, goes to work, does her shopping at Trader Joe's and whatever mm -hmm. other American stores and comes back. And that's her one day in the office. Uh, yeah. One day out of the month in the office. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just like someone who has to go down, go in once, once a month. Like yeah. people some people don't go have to go in at all but then it, it comes down to like do you value company culture do you value that social aspect of interacting with your coworkers in person or do you just want to get paid and just do your job like i think the pandemic really shifted that devotion to a company to just like you know what i want to do the bare minimum and why do you think paid. it's the bare minimum because it is you can work just as hard at home i, I was listening to an episode from um the huddle talk tv Mm -hmm. uh, podcast and they were talking about the silent quitting thing did you hear yeah. about that and i don't know why it's called silent. like they were saying like they didn't realize why like they didn't understand why it was called silent quitting when you're just doing your job you just yeah. weren't going above no and it's, beyond. it's not the workers who call it silent it's the, it's the employers who call it silent quitting no the employees call it that too no because they've they've adopted that name because the employers were saying that they're essentially saying like just because you're doing the job that you're supposed to be doing and nothing more. Yeah. You're essentially telling us that you're not going to uh, go above and beyond and we don't want to keep you here. Like you're, you're essentially not putting it. They, they believe you're not putting any effort, even though you're putting in as much as they require you to put in. And then now I'm wondering like, why are you now expected to go above and beyond, mm -hmm. like beyond your job description? Why are you expected to do that and still get paid just for your job description? Like, why is that an expectation? Yeah. Well, before the incentive, the incentive to do that is because you were going to work your way up the company. But um, so just doing your job is not enough anymore. No, Well, it hasn't been enough for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but that's always been the company culture is for every single company, for every single company to go above and beyond mm -hmm. shows that you're dedicated. And that's when you get a promotion. And I'm saying nowadays people don't care for that. Like exactly. as long as they're getting paid enough to to sustain their lifestyle they don't care about becoming a yeah CEO it's a clash of, a of company. cultures right of the mm. new work culture versus mm -hmm. the old work culture right right? right 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 so that's where that silent quitting came from right it's the old culture fighting against the new culture i think once all of the baby boomers are out of the workforce completely once they all retire mm -hmm. um and the generation before us what is that gen y i think we mm -hmm. always have this conversation but anyways once they're like kind of on their way out i think the company culture like uh, work culture will have an actual shift where mm -hmm. people won't expect you to maybe i don't know i think the world will look very different at that point yeah because you're thinking about like maybe 20 20, 20 years 30, from now kind yeah of thing, right so and um uh, people are i think that even the retirement age is going to be very different right because like later or earlier i feel like it's going to be earlier mm -hmm. but i don't know it's very hard to predict now what the world's going to look like in another 10 years yeah because like things are changing so quickly like. <laughs> yeah. yeah things are changing so quickly and like even things can change dramatically in a span of one to two years like covid showed us yeah that's true like you you it be pre-covid you wouldn't think of any of this stuff that we're doing now mm -hmm. would be possible or even thought of as an idea right right like working from home what i know Actually, that would be impossible to think of before covid i remember like when my when my brother still used to live at home he would have maybe work from home like if he was sick yeah he had that op like he had that option mm -hmm. but it wasn't like an every week thing it was like maybe once every like four or five months exactly so but now it's almost re expected to be able to work from home mm -hmm. if you're not required in the office to do anything physical right uh, because we do still have a lot of jobs out there that require to be like doing something physical on the mm -hmm. site right yeah, yeah, yeah so that's always going to be there mm -hmm. but if even there's a hint that like you don't have to be there for it, yeah, then there's more pushback against it, mm -hmm. uh, and people have feel like they have more power in their hands. You think and the power is the employees and not the employers? Yeah, that's so. That's where the shift is happening now, right? The mm -hmm. power is more into the employees and the mm. employers now, right? Because people feel like they uh, they have more of like a collective. Um, 
I don't know. They they feel be they feel more connected. Employee employees in general just mm-hmm. feel more connected. They feel like they can kind of like push for these things right. a lot more. Right. And they feel like they're gonna be backed for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they they are they are backed because I think um, especially in our city, mm-hmm. more people are moving out. So now the the job market is probably gonna open up even more because mm-hmm. people are leaving their jobs, or if they're fully remote, they can still live in Alberta, but have a job that where their office is in toronto mm-hmm. yeah or the whatever the company is based in toronto so i don't know maybe i'll consider moving to Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> hey inshallah you know we make enough money from all this stuff we can choose really where we want i'm just saying you know we, we can move to mexico yeah dubai <laughs> that was the dream too <laughs> and dubai not being you don't want to move there no not really you haven't been yet right what you haven't been yet right no let's go I don't know. Just something, should, just something well, about Dubai. Let's just visit. What? I think I think you should visit. Let's let's go next year. We'll talk about that after. No, but when I because for <laughs> me it's like I can't. You know, like you know, I could divorce my things from certain things. Mm-hmm. I can't divorce myself from the idea of like how this place was built versus what it looks like now. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I'm just saying. Uh, you know. I'm sorry about it, guys. I'm a good person. You know, I just can't, you know, just I can't be like, no, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm playing, 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 I'm playing. Are you saying I'm not a good person? Okay, guys, uh, thank are you again for listening saying, to the Cousin on. Connection podcast. Are you saying I'm no, not I'm a good playing, person? I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, mm-hmm. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, mm-hmm. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Okay. <laughs> on that note, everyone, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to another episode of our podcast. We will be back next week and don't forget to follow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then. Jump the gun. Go, 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 go. Don't forget to <laughs> don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, subscribe to our channel, give this video a thumbs up. We actually want to know your opinion. I know that you guys um are really good at, at leaving comments for us. So thank you so much. Love hearing from you guys all the time. It's it's great feedback. Um but yeah, let us know your thoughts on on the topics that we discussed today. Um and if you have any suggestions for future episodes, we want to hear from you. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.